literally just said la di da. <laughs> <laughs> he tells you I'm the work there. You may have had a beard. <laughs> So what we're doing here is we're, uh, I right clicked on these, or uh, highlighted these two change logs, just right clicked and I said compare. I've got another, another uh, tool here called Beyond Compare installed. I'll have a link to all these tools in the, on the last slide. Um, that just shows us the, uh, the previous version and the current version uh, and what was added or what was removed. I already took the liberty to post Orbius and PHP Storm on the Meetup page. Oh, that's yes. Thank you. And then, uh, yeah, PHP Storm is what you're using right now. Is your IDE right? Yep. Squirrel. So now, once everything looks the way we want it to, uh, we can actually. Uh, no changes there, but what you can do is uh, just change something here. Let's commit that last file. What color that's accurate? Put it to test, but we're going to do something called commit and push. And what that does is it gets us gets it off our local computer and puts it out on a uh, remote server. So it's asking us to define the remote server. We don't have one yet, uh, but I will show you a service that I use. I use uh, Bitbucket because it's basically free for up to five users. I know a lot of developers like GitHub. Creating a repository is really easy. Let's go through repositories, create repository. Um, it's called demo, demo repo. Uh, you can choose your repository type, we'll give it a kit. And then the URL to your repository is just right there for you. you copy it and go right back into PHP Storm. And when it's saying define remote, all it's asking is for that URL for the repository we just created. Say OK. Um, I think I was previously authenticated with, with Bitbucket, so it's not asking me uh, to authenticate. Maybe it will here. So we'll say push. And push is a term in Git, which means sending it off your computer to your remote server, basically. People are going to watch this video that that Aaron's recording and say, no, that's wrong. Hey, it's good enough for me. I just learned something new. I didn't know that you pointed to that URL. Oh, yeah. I, I do the whole SSH key route and, you know, it's like, hey, that's much simpler. Yeah. <laughs> I just ask you to authenticate. Nice. Yeah, I didn't know Bitbucket did that. And also, uh, when you connect via SFTP, it will ask you to accept the SSH key and everything the first time you connect to that server. So. But we can see this push here. It says there's four commits because we basically pushed a batch of commits to this remote server. And this is what other developers can access. Um, this can act as your backup. And um, you can actually inspect any one of these, these guys here. And it will even show you what changed just right in the web browser. There's also a mobile app for this too. So. Um, you know, it's it's different tools for different purposes. You know, we don't we don't necessarily need an all-in-one tool. That's why, personally, I, I don't use development plugins on WordPress sites. Uh, I manage my backup separately rather than using backup plugins. Um, and uh, you know, source control, I keep that separate. The one thing I use to tie things all together is, is basically a nice ID, like a PHP Storm. Visual Studio or something like that. Did you, say you don't use any plugins whatsoever? Oh, I use plugins, yeah. I use plugins all the time, but but really just ones that provide uh, the fun functionality on the site that belongs to the site. Um, Your development process. Yeah, yeah. Is, is Bitbeaker 
the mobile Bitly recovery. That's the that's the mobile app that connects to Bitbucket that I use. Yeah. Nice. Um, there's even it. It gets kind of philosophical, and but it's to me, it's all about keeping the production environment clean, separating responsibilities. I I would even argue that um, something like like gravity forms. I, it's nice that when you enter in something into the form, you can rest assured that the data is going to be captured, even if your email system is broken or something like that. But what would be, I would almost prefer is to have a robust, you know, integration with another system, like your uh, CRM system or something like that. And it would post the data to your CRM system because your website is for presentation and for providing functionality to users of the website. And I still don't quite understand why that data needs to be stored in the website itself, the website database. Um, but it does kind of show that people start trying to use WordPress um, you know, as a golden hammer and everything's starting to look like a nail. So but I know that I know that Gravity Forms does have integrations with other things so that you can push stuff to your CRM. I don't know if you can turn off storing that information to the database, but um, I don't know. It's just something I was kind of thinking of in the back of the room earlier. Um, yeah. Can we talk about that for a minute? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> you know, about um, five or six years ago, a friend of mine, a developer on the East Coast, called me and he told me about Adobe Business Catalog. And I actually started crying on the phone because basically what he told me was that instead of taking WordPress and uh, having to integrate um, a uh, CRM and your database and um, uh, a cart, um, they came up with a system where it was all integrated together. It was one database. And from that one database, you could track. Um, are you familiar with Infusionsoft at all? I'm not. No. Okay. So um, it's a really high level, um, uh, I guess we could say, sort of like CRM, like MailChimp or whatever. But the, the beautiful thing about this software was that, or this platform was that, it did integrate everything together. I didn't have to go out and try to integrate all these other pieces together. So I'm interested to know what your you know your thinking philosophy is as to why you want to divert that stuff off to a third party, which creates, in my mind, more work trying to integrate. <clears throat> if you're looking for an integrated solution, in terms of um, okay, we're selling something here on a and maybe WordPress is not the, the venue for it is maybe where we'll end up. But you know, let's say I um, am. You know, offering people um, the opportunity to uh, become affiliates, and then there's a whole affiliate chain. And I'm doing sales, and I'm doing marketing, and I want to track my emails, and I want to track that database. And we do some Google AdWord advertising that descends through the funnel, you know, into a CRM, and then it, or into a landing page, and then it triggers a uh, you know sign up you know web form, and then the web form keeps track of that person. Then we continue to market to them over time. What's your thinking about that in terms of why you would want to host that in one place? Well, it just all comes down to architecture. And with, when you're talking about integrations, uh, it, it really is kind of, you do have to think about the architecture and how things fit together. Sometimes uh, when you're using off-the-shelf products, things fit together in a particular way and they work really well. And that's fine. Um, you know, you don't want to over-engineer a solution because uh, if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. But um, at the same time, uh, you know, WordPress is a really good content management system, and it has lots of things that that work really well as part of that content management system: analytics and uh, conversion um, monitoring, and, uh, things like that. But at the same time, if, if someone wanted to say. You know, we've got so much customer data accumulated in, in our WordPress site now. Why not just, uh, you know, move our accounting system to QuickBooks uh, and the rest of our CRM system to QuickBooks or, or to 
move our accounting system to WordPress and the rest of our CRM system to WordPress. Uh, I just, I, that's, that's kind of where I start having to, to question things, you know. Uh, obviously, that's pretty extreme, right? But um, sometimes we have to kind of think about those extreme situations in order to realize that there is a line that, that should be drawn somewhere. Um, and it just, it just takes some thought to do that, you know. Personally, that sounds very scary to me because I deal with dozens of clients that exactly uh, what they do in QuickBooks because I wouldn't know how to imagine that that, that is the thought to do to that and I can prepare their quarterlies or their tax returns. That's scary. But on the other hand, that's really scary. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm not saying anything against yeah. integrations. Yeah. Integrations are great. If you can oh, have yeah. an e-commerce site that and have it in a great QuickBook, transferability of the data mm -hmm. because they've got to get it to us. So, um, where, what data, um, the discussion is, is where do you draw the lines, right? Your, your philosophical view is that WordPress is a content management system, so it's for managing really the front end pieces of your website, essentially. Right. And so all the hard work is done in the back end. Where, what, what database solutions do you recommend for the back end? For WordPress or for other systems? Well, for, for, for a, a complex business system that, you're, that has a, a, a front end WordPress Pre, you know, is, you use WordPress for your front end, but then you have a complex business system that integrates with that. Well, it, it, it depends. That's all custom. Well, and, and if I might interject in line with, you know, the point you're making, what I'll find myself doing with a lot of business customers in, in the century or so I've been doing this, is what is the system of record? In, in the case of your CRM, you know, what is the system of record for your sales leads and all that? It's probably a CRM system. I ultimately want to get the data there, and then I want to protect that basket of eggs very well yeah, yeah, in yeah. that category. I want the accounting data in the accounting system, and then I want to appropriately protect that data in that mess, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see work processes. And, 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 I, and I'm liking your definition, this is a content management system. But let's think about what content we're talking about, mm -hmm. the content of your website and the front end. Uh, uh, yeah, of your interface to right. your customers, your users, and the public. Uh, I, I, that's the way I see WordPress and really any website is it's, it's an interface. It shouldn't necessarily um, do much more than that. Um, you know, if it needs to have custom code or, uh, or custom content, it should all serve its purpose as that interface. If it's taking in data, um, you know, unless the purpose of that website, you know, like QuickBooks Online or something, is to you know, do stuff with that data, but pass it off to a, a system that specializes in that data. Let it become your system of record. Um, and that's, that's my contention, basically. Uh, Gravity Forms, on the other hand, I know it does do that. It may store it locally in your WordPress data database, but it also does have integrations with various CRM systems, which will push the data over for you. So, so yeah, Gravity Forms is like a conduit into other systems. It's, it's, a, it's a way to have a front end that integrates with all these other systems, with a, different, with a variety of different systems. So yeah. a data mart on its way to the system. Right? Yeah. And integrations with systems are, are great. I you know I think it's really a good way to go. But uh, when when you consider extending a system, uh, I would just say just just keep in mind what that system is intended to do, what the purpose of that system is. Yeah. The way I kind of look at WordPress is like a jack of all trades, master of none. Like it can do a lot of things, but it's. It's like some of the other like CRM stuff and that type of thing, it's going to be able to do them, but it's whether or not you want it to do it to the ability that you expect it to. So I know when we used it, we tried to overextend it so much. I mean, it could do it, but it wasn't doing it well. We had to install kind of hodgepodge plugins or kind of make it work 
and that's not necessarily something you want to do, especially with CRM. So when it's generating sales and leads and that type of thing, I think that'd be something better left to, like, something more designated to that, I guess, is the way I look at it. It's a good, it's a good way to collect leads and stuff and feed them into the CRM, but you wouldn't want to, I personally wouldn't want to make WordPress itself into any sort of CRM. Um, yeah. well, then you probably want to get it into your Salesforce or whatever and then leverage on what that tool can do with that data. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, that's all I got. I'm going to go work camp uh, next weekend, so. In the Apples? Yep. Dude. Oh, I'll see you there. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Sold out, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully I haven't said anything uh, too disparaging or disagreeable about WordPress, so I'm okay. No, no. I, I know those WordPress, those WordCamps can get pretty rowdy. So. <laughs> how, uh, how many people do they allow there? Uh, this is going to be my first one. 